Okay, welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is my second of my fun with fish. Father's Day type of uh, themed card um, projects here. And I have this back, this card right here, and it has this little fisherman in boat, and we kind of follow the fishing line. This is really the front of the card right here, and we follow that line around, and voila, kind of my Jaws formatted uh, fish head right here. And again, using one of those um, real flies here, and I have kind of the Happy Father's Day kind of following along the line here. You put someone's name or whatever, as I mentioned in the video, but um, all kinds of things you can kind of do with this type of formatting here, but I like the idea of this kind of sequential aesthetics type of thing. It's kind of like a confusing as to what it is right here, and then someone's opens it up right here, so it'd probably fall along lines with something like this. Unless you have it, you know, the card formatted like this, and they pull the card out like this, and they look at this, and they open it up right here, following along, and they open it up like that. So this little kind of sequential thing, you're really making use of the format of this in terms of the flipping, and then we have that. Okay, so it's like the big conclusion, you know, as far as, you know, kind of following along that uh, path of that line right there. And um, kind of ends up like that. I used black paper on this one like that, but um, here's what it, I did um, with this scene. We have this kind of this mm, kind of golden uh, fish head right here. And it has these little gold embellishments on there, you know, like some fish have, you know, very colorful, very iridescent, almost metallic in some ways, okay? And that's our big kind of conclusion. But what I did was on this thing, I kind of put this little fisherman in this gold um, matting right around it, but also in the water down there. I also have the kind of gold pen work and um, little white um, highlighting the water to create somewhat of a relationship between this character right here and this one, okay? Um, because I want that kind of aesthetics to carry through and to create this relationship between that character and this one right here. So little subtle things like that. And it's easy to do. You know, you just kind of do some of the same types of effects that you put on this or you use just the same colors that you use on this on that right there. And then they're connected up through this little line. I don't know. You know, it might be kind of interesting if I did it with a little gold line instead. Maybe that would have been even more of a connection between the two. But, I don't know, I'm just kind of experimenting around with this type of thing right now. And if you want to watch this video, it's pretty self-explanatory um, as far as um, what to do on this. I guess I spend most of my time kind of uh, playing around with that fish head and putting on those little embellishments. It's really fun to do. So, anyways, but if you choose to watch it, I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any, any questions or whatnot, write it in the comment section. Okay. I had so much fun doing my previous card with this fish head that I, I thought I would uh, play around with um, a couple more compositions based on that idea of using a, a three-dimensional real fly. I have 12 of these, so I can do 12 of those cards. Um, types of cards, I should say. And I thought I'd do some... I don't know, some kind of wilder applications with this. Now I just have a cosmetic sponge right here. And I want to just go for some, I don't know, just kind of a some different types of backgrounds that I can stamp that fish head on. I'm finding that type of fish head there. I usually only stamp those, I don't know, I've stamped them on various things before, the, the symmetry sheet designs, and, um, and then I've usually applied colors uh, afterwards, but I think doing this over just kind of these swatchy looking 
backgrounds can y potentially yield some interesting results. So um, I thought I'd just kind of see exactly what they can do. Um, just with a lot of variation in here. Okay, that was a distressing fire brick. It was mustard seed. Um, let's try something brighter in here too. Um, let's go with uh, some orange. This is just Marvy orange. Okay. Let's go like something like that. If you want to have a little bit of variation, maybe. Put some lime green. This one's called uh, just a uh, uh, light green, but it is really kind of a limey looking green, very yellow green. Okay. We'll go with something like this. Okay. I have a feeling you can kind of just about do anything. Oh, just, I'm just using the same tip. I, I'm, yeah, it's probably polluting this sponge tip, though, but I'm not really worried about that. I just blot it off a little bit. Okay, now here's a little bit of a brighter green. This is number two, Marvy Red. Okay, just for a little bit of a bolder. Uh, more intense color, maybe. All right, so we have something like that. <laughs> I don't know, does that look like a fish head to you? I should actually, I should spritz this with some water, you know, to get a little bit of a texture going in there as well, but I don't know. I don't feel like waiting for that to dry a little bit. I mean, it wouldn't take too long if I had spritzed it, but I don't know. Let's just try this out. I'm doing, this is some experimentation for me. Of course, all the videos, oh, I don't know, almost all the videos are, oops. I need to, this is a full sheet of tack and peel on my really large block right here. And it really takes that full sheet of tack and peel for this image. It just fits it perfectly, luckily, too. If it didn't, you know, you could just use some double stick tape or something like that on a block. And... All right, VersaFine ink. Something nice and bold and dark on here. And hopefully I've got this whole thing in here. Okay, it's going to cover the entire area. Fish it is bigger than this piece of paper. Maybe I should have stamped it on a larger piece, but oh well. This is a quarter size piece of uh, cardstock. Quarter page, quarter letter page. Just making sure. Right in the middle here, you know, you want to get adequate pressure in the middle. All right, good. Look at that head. It, it doesn't really matter what you do, you know, in terms of your colors in the background. Just kind of make it crazy. The brighter and kind of more varied. I don't know. I'm finding all, I don't know, the better, maybe. But that looks pretty cool to me. This is on glossy cardstock, by the way, but you can do it on matte cardstock. On matte cardstock, you might be able to use some kind of iridescent inks or something like that. Paint them on, do, I don't know, watercolors in the background. Um, I think it'd be do cool to do some metallics in here, so. Um, but just kind of playing around with that. Look at that. Right there, that'll be a nice, it makes for a nice bold image, that's for sure. It's kind of an attention getter. All right, so that is that. All right, let me 
while I'm doing this, I'm going to do one more, I think. Let's go for a little bit of a bigger one, though. All right, so I can get that full uh, head on there. All right. Um, let's do a different colored one. All right. Let me get another sponge. Right. Here's a bit of green already on there. I have no idea when I did that last. But let's get even. Let's see what this can do. Let's get even. I don't know. Kind of sloppier, maybe. Okay, this is Memento Bahama Blue. There's a little bit of green in here too, but this green, I think the last time I used this was probably over a year ago, so. Um, Alright, let's do, let's do blue down here. Okay. Just like that. As you can see, I'm being really careful. I'm joking. Okay. And let's try some of this green again. Mixing up, you know, the two a little bit. Okay, that looks like it'll be nice and bright though, huh? Let's blend in a little bit of a different blue, how about a Danube blue? It's a little bit um, darker. All right, add some of this. It has some of the green in it, of course, but yeah, maybe I should use some pure area. All right, Here, I'll just kind of fold that over like that. mustard seed. Oops, I just put it on that blue. Let's fold this over this way. Kind of gives, I don't know, the more you layer down, I mean, it can muddy things up. Um, potentially, but you know, in this type of kind of application and treatment of these, I don't think it's going to matter too much because the image is it's a fairly dominant image, of course um, so it can really take a lot you know um, a lot of variation and still kind of dominate the uh, you know, the color scheme, or I don't know, the background, the foundation, I should say. The foundation would have to be really, really, um, I don't know, loud uh, in terms of visually to uh, kind of dominate this image. But, okay, let's see. Just go for about right there. Let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna go left, top, middle, right, bottom, far right. Now this is versifying, so it, it is a pigment ink and it's a little bit um, thick. Now this one right here, I can tell it's puckering a little bit. You know, 
in terms of that black ink as it's trying to as it's setting up it's separating a little bit but um I don't, I don't know I have any problem with that it just kind of adds to the textural kind of quality of it all right and it also, I mean, it depends on what types of inks you've laid down. Mementos and most types of inks, they're a little bit thick, so they're kind of um, floating on the surface a little bit. So when you put this kind of thicker ink down, it's kind of laying on it, and as it's kind of setting up, it could kind of, you know, separate a little bit. But I don't know, you can try other types of inks. Uh, Memories ink would probably be an excellent choice for this. It's very thick um, ink. All right, look at that. That's funny. I mean, you can't even tell the, uh, you know, that varied, real hatchy type of sloppy <laughs> kind of application of it down there. Once this goes right over the top of it, it doesn't really even show, so. All right, so we have a couple different fish here. Look at that. They almost look, they almost look like they're different size there. The same size. I get well. This one's smaller because yeah, I didn't stamp out the back of it, but it almost looks like a different size depending on the uh, color scheme used. All right, so we have a couple fish heads here. Those should be a lot of fun to play around with. But um, with that ink there, I'm definitely going to have to wait for these to set up a little bit and dry. So we'll have to give those a little bit of time, but I can't wait to get into those and uh, continue working on them. Okay, all right. All right, oh, uh, about a half hour or so. Inks are dry. That, these pigment inks dry faster than I, I think they would, or, well, I was gonna say would or should. Uh, I guess they're kind of faster drying inks, kind of similar to the uh, brilliance inks, maybe, more than, say, color box, which, you know, is a pigment ink as well. But I don't know, maybe there's something in Versify that makes them dry faster. Um, that being said, I should clean off my stamp uh, pretty soon. Not have the ink staying on there for too long. I'm cutting along this line. I'm thinking about cutting off that top line just to uh, kind of get rid of that outline to make it look a little bit more dimensional. Like that. But see, there was some kind of separation that puckering on the uh, the uh, the ink, um, just because it was kind of floating. So that being said, you might want to give it a little bit more time to set up, you know, as far as your backgrounds, whatever you end up doing it with. I was thinking that um, some of those distress oxides might be kind of interesting as a background um, for this uh, image, you know, to get some really cool textures. I, I'm just kind of touching the you know, surface as far as um, kind of the patterning that I think it would look really good um, with this image. So, uh, a lot of experimenting to do. All right, now I'm not going to use the back side of these things. It's usually kind of going off the paper a little bit anyway, so I'm not too concerned about like back here. It's probably going to be like that, or I don't know, coming in from you know the side. I'm not really quite sure, but um, I'm not even quite sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but. Um, before then, um, let's play around with uh, some of that dimension again. I love doing this on this image because it's just a lot of fun. But um, all right, how you treat these er, images, or how you can treat these images, we see these larger kind of light areas like that. And what you can do is go on with a lighter color. So it just depends on what color they are, and you can kind of add in some of these kind of little embellishments, okay? And this is this is just a uniball signo pen. And I'm adding some of this yellow in here. It's kind of it's a little bit lighter than the uh, the color down there. So see that variation now? 
Let's see it back here too. See how it's darker green. Let me show you what this looks like. Hitting it with some of this yellow back here. And you don't even have to, it doesn't have to be a careful application of it or anything like that, okay? It's gonna just, I don't know, look a little squiggle in there. I mean, you can be real careful if, if you want to, but look at that dimension now. See that like that? I kind of put it midway. It's just about here, and this way goes to about there, but see, then you leave the other color that already exists on there. Let's do it on the back side right here and just create a little bit of extra dimension like this, okay? Because see where it gets wider, it's lighter, right? So I'm putting some even lighter touches into that area. So that's the area, you know? As it gets wider, it's getting lighter in that area. See that? So see that you get a little bit more dimension gives the illusion of kind of three dimensions within a flat space. So that being said, I like having, um, you know, gel pens of various um, colors, you know, a good um, set of pastel um, gel pens is really uh, nice to have. Okay, now this one, see this yellow right here? That yellow is just barely lighter than that green, so it really doesn't show up, so you don't need to put any down there. There's not enough of a variation. This one right here, the kind of fatter area is right there in terms of my line. Um, the line, I don't know, width, I guess? Empty, uh, negative space, I guess you can say. I call this the symmetry series because I, when I was doing these images, um, I wanted it to be kind of a perfect balance of light and dark, you know, positive and kind of negative space. I don't know if there really is a positive and negative space. There, things are pretty equal in terms of going hand in hand. So what's the positive and what's the negative really? But. Um, Anyway, that was the, that's the theory, or that's why it's called symmetry. Okay, see that? A little bit in here, and then I'll do it in white too, and I'll clean up the eye there too. It'd be cool to do that eye and I don't know, maybe it's some kind of glass, you know, they, they have that, um, boy, I forgot the name of it, but it's that clear, you know, um, I was gonna say lacquer, but it's not lacquer, but boy, diamond, gla uh, maybe diamond glaze or something like that. I don't know if that's it. I might be uh, saying the wrong thing, but um, it was something like that, you know, to make that eyeball really kind of glassy, that would be kind of cool. All right, this yellow works right down here too, on top of the red orange. I think I have orange too, now that I think about it. Let me see. Uniball Signo. Um, I don't know if this one's... I don't know if this is a... a point five or it's a point seven. Let me see if it says on here. Yeah, it doesn't say, I'm, so I'm not really quite sure what thickness um, of a roller this is, but Uniball Signos are pretty good pens as far as their dependability, you know, from what I've found um, in terms of gel pen, the clogging factor of it. I, 
I haven't really had clogging happening on too many Cygnus. It has happened, but it's usually after I've had it for a while. Okay, I've laid down some orange there. See those two tones of orange? I mean, there is a little bit of variation in there anyway, but all right. It's hard to kind of add gel into gel, especially when that gel underneath is kind of already wet, so it's not applying. All right. When it's not applying, I don't miss it because I have no choice, right? I, mean, I could let that dry and kind of go over it again, but sometimes you're kind of going into it a little bit, you know, that gel kind of sits on the surface and sometimes when it's dry, you scribble over it with a ballpoint pen, you're scratching into the gel, so uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, that being said, I mean, you can use a workable fixative or something like that. Over it, spray it, and then you can go over it again, but uh, that requires you do that. <laughs> and I'm not really quite sure if I feel like doing it, but look at that variation that's happening in there now. Fish lips. Okay, that was with yeah, oops, that was with yellow. Let's try the um, Univol Signo 1.0. Not sure if this one's dry or not. Let me see. Okay, now speaking of Univol Signo, you can see right here in my is that barrel. I mean, usually the ink goes up to about right here. This comes to show you what a you know pretty decent pen is. I mean, that ink has gone down below this visible point here. Okay. So I've used up quite a bit of that ink. And it's the same thing for this other one. You know, it started up here, so, and now it's all the way down in there. So that's what you want out of a gel pen. You want, you want to be able to utilize it, of course, you know, until it's out of ink, not, you know, way up here and then it, you know, it's just not working at all. And if you're a crafter out there and you bought gel pens before, you know what I'm talking about. All right, now I was going to just add this, cut out another eye and add it in there, but um, and just glue it right over the top, giving it a little bit of extra dimension. But I don't know if I feel like I have to do that. See that? See what I've done here? <clears throat> this is where you add that ink. See, it's kind of a fatter. Here, let me show you on this one where I haven't done it yet. See that right there? See that? There's this fatter part of that open area, right? And I've just gone in there, and I've added that white to that. So look at that dimension kind of comes out at you, right? Or at least I hope it looks like that. Let's look down here in the uh, this fish um, kind of lip area, okay? Fatter area down here, so I'm kind of going in here, and I'm adding kind of these little ovals or whatever, or you can, or you can just scribble a little line in there, like that, okay? Let's see, hopefully it looks like it's giving it a little bit of dimension. And I've added some yellow down here. Let me see if it'll take some of the white. This white is a 1.0 roller, so I can get a little bit more ink releasing. All right, now this area here, I don't think I added, you see that white down there? <clears throat> Let's try this one right here, okay. You can do those two little circles, you know. Okay, all right. See that? It's kind of adding a little bit of texture as well. If you want to add some of that texture in, in the, uh, these portions you can as well. A little white up here, little dots, patterning. 
kind of fun. Um, yesterday in that video I used the, uh, the gold and silver types of pens too, and those are really fun to do. See this area down here, this gill? Let's kind of highlight that a little bit. Let's bring that out of touch. Okay. So that kind of gives it a little bit of dimension. You kind of pull out, you can see what it kind of does. Do the same thing down here. You can just kind of pick an area in that zone. It doesn't really matter where. Kind of just creating a little bit of patterning in this area. those teeth to really stand out. So let's take some of this and I'm just going to draw those teeth, the white of the teeth back in with the gel pen. Be kind of cool to make those teeth uh, maybe a metallic, you know, even, or gold. <laughs> you can give them your fish a, is it, a grill if you want to. Look at that. See that? Oh, that really stands out a little bit more instead of having them um, colored. Okay. All right. That's too much gel back there. It's not working. Like I said, I can spray fix that off and it'll be fine. But see that? Uh, see what that does? You know, if you add a little bit of patterning, it's like really. I don't know, these, these faces are kind of fun to embellish a little bit. I like this eye. I always loved uh, kind of bringing out the eyes of uh, whatever I was uh, drawing. Sometimes, uh, like in suns, I would, for the iris, I would make a kind of sun rays, you know, it's like a little pattern to reiterate the... Uh, subject matter. I'm talking about a sun, like a sun with a face, but there's the eye. And see these teeth down here? Kind of, you know, they're, they're okay like that. I mean, you don't have to do any of this, but this is kind of a fun little way to embellish. And I think it's one of those little things. It's, it's just a fun little detail to do. And I think it, you know, it really shows up um, in the end result. So it's not like a kind of a, a lost detail, you know. There's a lot of gel already down here, so I'm starting to kind of really pick some of it up. Sometimes it goes into the roller, you know, of whatever color you're working with, so just kind of give it a little bit of a scribble and it should come right out of there. All right, shall we kind of bring a little bit more focus to the uh, front of the uh, 
fish, you know, the front end of it. Bring a little emphasis. Yeah, I shouldn't have put so much of that yellow down there. <clears throat> Add some of this to this top portion, maybe. That looks kind of cool too if you layer them like that, huh? Put one kind of uh, in back of the other, and then you can have another one coming out here, like in a different color. I can't imagine if you stamp this out in gold, one in silver, one in darker color. I would imagine the darker colors you go with um, layered in the back. Um, the farther back it would seem by value, you know, darker ones, um, kind of receding visually. Kind of bringing a, kind of a little bit of a lighter value to the, uh, the gills, maybe, right down here. Fish heads. Someone should put this in a bowl or draw an oval and call it fish head soup or something like that. All right, we have um, our pen here. It's a painty. I, I don't even know these. Zig painty, do they still make these? Um, I have no idea. I bought this years and years and years ago. And it works beautifully and it always has so I'm just going to give um, these little gills I'm gonna put this I started putting it in the light area but it's kind of dark so I'm gonna put some of this gold in the darker area okay so it's you can't really see it right there I'm like where did it go <laughs> it's in this little, little area right here but right and then <laughs> you, I don't know, kind of, you can kind of, I don't know, there's so much glare on this, I don't know if you, see if you do that, I can see it right here, I'm trying to see if it shows up in the camera at all, but these little um, marks like this with this metallic um, are a little bit shiny, so... It's one of those little kind of embellishments for, you know, the recipient of your card or, you know, whoever happens to be just looking at it. Okay, so I'm just drawing this. This is a little bit of a variation. I didn't do this yesterday, but I didn't really think to either. So I'm just kind of filling it in right here. Okay, the paint wasn't really flowing very well. Now it is. And it's very, very metallic looking. Isn't that? There we go. There's a little bit better. So it's kind of dark, but then, yeah, there we go. Um, but see that? It catches that light. So that's kind of a fun little um, detail in there. So, there we go. Fish have, you know, have some really beautiful patterning to them. I 
All right, it's just kind of a blob. You don't even have to be real careful about it. There you have it like that. There you have kind of the real kind of glistening look to it, like so. Hmm. All right. Kind of learning what to do on these things um, with each day. I, I mean, that's one thing you can do. You have to, but um, that was the gold. Let me try the silver on this one, this side. I feel like just using the uh, gold because it's flowing so well, but let's try the silver on here. Okay. Looks pretty good as is. It's flowing pretty well. Okay, let's go in here into the uh, so many fish have that kind of silvery look to them, don't they? change your scale sometimes of your little embellishments to create kind of a rich and varied surface, you know, as much as possible. Well, I don't know. I guess in this case when it you know, when we're representing what we're representing. And that's kind of a patterning patterns in nature. Not everything is always symmetrical or anything like that, so you can kind of randomize things a little, a little bit more. Okay, see so that? You can add some back here. I don't know if there's other colors of uh, kind of metallics too, like green metallics, you know, something like, like this. If there is, I'd like to uh, get some of those. I, I really love kind of metallic pens. I, I don't use them too much. But like something like this silver would be fantastic, like in a kind of a blue starry scene and I love using gold as an embellishment like in a like a sunset scene as a you know for like flares or something of that sort you know like sun flares okay so we have that look at that Fun. Well, that one really shows up, huh? Here's the you know, gold one. Let me try something here. Let me try a little bit of gold or silver within the gold. Putting a little, I'm putting a little accent of silver right on top of some of the gold um, detailing. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, see that silver is a little bit shinier, so we have kind of a layered embellishment there. Huh. All right, I have a feeling that these are going to be really fun to utilize. A card. Um, is that little kind of pebbling of that in the eye? 
wonder if I have something for that. All right, now, uh, let me see here. Here's a Sharpie. Let me see something. <clears throat> let me see if this draws on top of that eyeball. Yeah, okay, no problem. Just take any type of black pen if you, if it kind of puckered like that. It does it, it and again, it did it because it was on a glossy cardstock, and I had a, th you know, a really thick slathering of uh, ink that I stamped over with um, the Versafine, so it kind of, it was like stamping wet into wet. Like I said, you can either, you can heat set it where it won't do that. Um, but the eyes are one of those focal points, so I do want to get that pretty dark, like so. Okay. See that like that? One little fun thing to do for things like eyeballs, too. Right is to, it's really like dimensional. Um, take like a white pen or something like that. Or you can take one of the metallics. White will show up a little bit more because, because of the contrast between black and white, but um, I like to put a little twinkle in their eye like that. See a little circle like that? It looks a little bit more, a little bit kind of glassier. See that? The difference between these two. I mean, it, yeah, I don't know. You can put it wherever. Here's one right here up top. Like so. And I'll put one down below like that. Or I can go to Looks like that. It looks like, you know, it just looks like something is reflecting in the eye, you know, like some kind of little light. It gives it a little bit of life to it. Okay. All right. Oh boy, it never ends. I was thinking, okay, that white looks really good there. Let me put a little bit of the accent of this white into the silver. Because nature is very ornate sometimes, most of the time. See that? I think that looks pretty good. It gave that silver a little bit of dimension. So, let me see something here. I don't like that. third little dot there, I'm just filling it in. Here's this little gel pen. Okay. Maybe with this one too, I'll just go for one little dot in the eyeball. Looks better. Okay. All right. Uh, it can be said that I love details, so apologies for taking a while on this part, but I'm going to add some of this little accenting of the white into that gold and silver accenting right in here. Love that type of thing. I like creating, like I said before, a little bit of variation. So, so this kind of Stands out a little bit more. In some areas like so. Okay. Don't do that. You can do other things up top there. I think my card yesterday I might have done some different things. I already forgot. Um. <clears throat> All right. So we have these flies. And I have to decide which one of these. I'm gonna do my my jaws 
type of thing. One of these I might I might add a fly in there. Maybe I'll this one I'll add like a, a red or orangish fly to kind of go along with that theme, and maybe this one will be my kind of my Jaws themed um, fish coming up here for my cards. So I'm gonna go get some cards and. Um, Pre-folded cards, or I'll see if I, I need to fold a card and um, you know, for the construction of my scene. So let me figure that out. And the card format shouldn't be too um, time-consuming at all. Okay, I think I'm going to do kind of my <clears throat> Jaws pieces. If you, you're familiar with that movie and kind of the poster that ran with it, it had that big gigantic face there with a little swimmer up here, but um, I think I'm going to do something. Here's my little fish and I have that line kind of going. This is like a two-page spread and I'll have it kind of going here and I'll have a line kind of going up there. This is what the, uh, the boat in reverse will look like over here because I can't really stamp it in a color on black paper. I, I could stamp it in um, or I can just have a line going like that without the fisherman. Maybe that would be good too. And maybe I'd have more of the fisherman on the front of the uh, uh, card. Maybe that would be better. Yeah, I, I'm not going to do this. I was going to do this in Brilliant Sync. I don't think I like that too much. I reversed out. So, all right. Um, let me, I'm going to clean this up a little bit right down here. I'm going to give it a fresh cut. Okay. And I'll just do that with an exacto blade. All right, just cutting off that side of it. I just want it where it's really clean as far as a crisp edge goes, okay, like that. And I'll go roughly um, center with this. <clears throat> Maybe about like so, okay. I thought about doing that splatter painting around here, but I thought I'd keep it a little bit cleaner um, without doing something like that. But the other option was I was going to have it, you know, you can have it um, kind of put some waves or something like that in some situation with a lot of like explosive kind of action. This fish jumping out after the fly, and that would be kind of cool too. It would be really dramatic as well. But I don't know, there's a lot of different possibilities as far as this composition goes. So, um, And where you take it, my gosh, possibilities are endless, which is what we always want, hopefully. And hopefully it's not just a matter of which should I do, or which one will look good. It's just, you know, hopefully all of your solutions are <clears throat> things will look good. I don't see why they wouldn't. But it just, it just comes more of a matter of... Um, what you want to do for that at that moment in time for that given card or given piece, whatever you're doing, scene. All right, these are just some. I thought they used to call these photo squares, and these are just adhesive squares. I was talking about going to Dimension yesterday, and I still need to do that. I need to put a little raise things on the other side, and I think that would be really fun. Okay, so I'll go roughly about here. I'll, I'll put the mouth roughly about like so. Okay. Kind of, I'm centering the mouth. The fish itself is a little bit left of center. See, well, this, is, this is a folded card like that. This is going to be the interior, by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'll do on my exterior. I could stamp at a scene or something like that, too, but I don't know. Someone just has, like, a Happy Father's Day or something like that, or Dear Whoever, you know what I mean? And then you can 
put something on there. All right, now let's see. Do this and I thought about just doing some kind of, you know, little line in here. I had to really free form it. Now I'm going to really make sure that my gel pen is rolling and not clogging. Okay, now sometimes you do it too fast, you're going to get the break in there. So to find the ideal rate, I mean you can go slower than the ideal too. Eh, it's going to break it up on me a little bit. This one, it, eh, is this one? One of these is really low on ink. All right, that's pretty good. All right, so let's see, where do I want it to go? Should I have it coming in from the top or? I think from the side like this, like it's, you know, we're doing this thing where it's the front of the card and we kind of open it up and, you know, I mean, it'd be kind of cool if we did something where on this side of the card, it had something with a line and then we continued it. I, th I think I'm gonna, going to play around with something here. All right, I'm, I think I'm gonna, going to take the line from about right here. And I think I'm going to do something on the other side. Exactly, precisely what I wanted. I'm joking. <laughs> I was just thinking, all right, line don't stop rolling <clears throat> in this case. All right. Um, heating up my gel pen again and what color was I going to do? I think orange, huh? Because this is, it matched kind of that color a little bit. So I think this fly right here looks pretty good. I couldn't find this the other, in my video yesterday, but this is a little 12 pack. It was just a couple bucks, you know. I couldn't find it, it was because I was like this on my table. So anyways, I'm, go I'm going to glue gun this. Um, this right there okay and that'll make for my little three-dimensional embellishment all right happy father's day or happy no happy Father's Day. <laughs> I mean, when you're doing this, I mean, whoever you're giving like a card like this to, you can say Happy Father's Day, and then what you do is you write in, you know, someone's name here or something like that, and maybe the date or something like that. And down here, Father's F A T H. I'm not sure. Maybe I think I'm going to write it right here because. It'll, I'll have room for all of it right here. Okay, all right. Uh, I still think, I don't know, from a design standpoint, I'm still thinking um, white would be good to do it in. I, I was thinking about gold or silver, but <clears throat> I really want the all of the viewers' attention to be all on that face right there, you know, and that fly, so I don't want to detract from that. So I'll say, but I think I, I still like that wrapped text thing. You can do, you can do like a Happy Father's Day um, stamp and emboss it in there or something like that. And 
the internet as I'm doing this, you can see maybe if you should spread your text out a little bit more. We'll see how it looks on mine. If it doesn't look the best, then alter it. This will be our test one for all of you. taking so much time to really space things out perfectly, so, so I can say Happy Father's Day, okay, on the text there, and I'll say, you know, you can put your date if you want to, or whatever, or, I don't know, do you, I mean, if you have a lot more text to write, put it to, you know, you can make your your line longer. You could say, Happy Father's Day 2018 Love and then you can write your names there or something like that. And that would be kind of fun too, so maybe or maybe, maybe make it more kind of loopier, you know to give yourself more space, kind of avoid the tighter areas like that. I don't know, you can write whatever you want. It's kind of a fun little statement to, um <clears throat> to do it along the line, you know, that you put in there. So, let me... exclamation mark. Okay, so let's look at that. And that's kind of fun. Um, let's see. Hmm, let me do something here. All right. All right, give me a minute. I need to cl go clean off this stamp after I put that uh, um, Brilliance pigment ink on there. Okay, I have my piece of paper right here. Um, I'm going to... Cut out a little piece of this, okay. And why don't this is roughly um, one and a half, one by one and a half, okay. So I'm going to cut out a one by one and a half um, piece from this glossy cardstock. You can do it in matte cardstock though, if you want to. But this is going to be this little little embellishment. Well, it's not going to be an embellishment. It's going to be quite a significant player in this kind of a uh, I don't know what scenario they were creating here. <clears throat> All right, but here's what I'm going to do on this. Within this little tiny given space, if I just stamp that in black, it's going to be boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of a visual dialogue between this fish and this fisherman, okay? So what I want to do is I'm going to put this fisherman out on a boat on a lake or whatever and it will be like sunset or something like that. <clears throat> Alright, now I have some of this ink on this still from uh, doing that swatchy background. Or did I use this one? Maybe I used this sponge here, but maybe, I don't know, remember when this was from. Maybe it was from yesterday or something, but 
Let me create a little bit of a swatched background, okay? <clears throat> We're creating a little bit of a sequential connection between the two players in our scenario. Um, feel like getting up and cleaning off my uh, stylus tools right now, so let me just use this back end of this um, cosmetic sponge. So that kind of warmed it up a little bit. When you layer some colors like that, see that? It's a little bit anemic looking. So let's put a little of this in there and see how that really warmed it up. <clears throat> Okay, now let me go back to my slightly light darker shade. I mean, this is going to be like this tiny little thing in here, but so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. This little swatched background, okay, and let me add a little bit more of that red. I want to match it up a little bit more, at least in a small area, okay, to pair or to kind of have that connection between that little figure in there. I mean the fish. The fish and the finger. The fish and the figure. Okay, and I think I used orange. Maybe that's one thing. I used a lot of orange in there, so let's add some of this orange into the mix. I said I wasn't going to spend too much time on this, but I don't know, maybe it is a bit of time considering the one by one inch nature of it. But I don't know, it's going to play a significant role, I think. It's going to be my kind of your first act, you know, in terms of uh, the scene, you know, it's going to be the thing that people see first, so. All right, let me frame this off a little bit. This is small, but I still like to do a little bit of um, kind of a vignette type of a touch to this. And that kind of frames it off. It is a little self-contained um, scene. It'll play, you know, it's part of a, a larger scenario, but When I stab this little guy in there, <laughs> not that it's hard or anything, but you have to spend a lot of time on a little thing like that. It's like, okay, make sure you get a nice, clean impression. Practice stamp, okay. Nice, even pressure.
I hope I got even pressure. I think I went down crooked. I'm not sure. All right. Not bad. All right, that's fine. <laughs> okay, now what I need to do is... Um, Excess there, right to the exacto blade. Um, a little bit of a matting around that would look good against this page right here. Okay, I'm gonna put him right here in the corner, and then the card front is just going to do this tangle of a. <laughs> little things that kind of ends up on the interior right here so we're going to have kind of a first you know kind of intro it's going to be it's almost like on the back of the page but we're going to really utilize four sides of this folded card for this um, piece and hopefully that's not you know it's a really fun thing you know in the end result but um, all right, I'm going to find a piece of paper for this and cut it out, and um, we'll get that um, fixed onto the uh, card. I'm going to pause right here so you don't have to suffer through this um, boring little process right here. Okay, I have uh, matted this little piece, and I did it on gold. I found it. I had some more gold little bit more gold cardstock and I did that well first of all it goes really well with this golden kind of a uh, sunsetty horizon thing um, but it also goes with the gold on the fish here so we want to create that as many kind of relationships between this piece and this piece okay now this is a pre-folded card and you know, this fish right here is roughly about midway, so this is my thought on this, okay? Um, it's coming from the bottom here, and it's really large, right? We have this line going here, and it's going to be... <laughs> this is really the front of the card, so when someone gets a card, all they are going to see this little line, go, you know, up here. Okay, so I'm going to kind of match it. But I like the idea of its counterpart, this fish and this... Fisherman to be kind of positioned uh, similarly, but kind of in the opposite side on this piece right here. So this is kind of really the back of the card, but hopefully it kind of works in conjunction with the other part, you know, in terms of kind of some sequential kind of formatting and aesthetics kind of gives a little bit of a story, you know, and hopefully it kind of, it's a little bit of an unconventional format, you know, usually it's just something right here, and then you open it up and it's a blank card, right? But this one we're going to try to create a little bit of a, oh, I don't know, fun and interest here, okay? All right, now, this looks quite different, right? You know, we have that gold on there and whatnot. Let's do this. Now, it doesn't, this doesn't match up and it's not supposed to, okay? Because it, it's small, but let's do something here. See these little ripples in the water? Let's create kind of a, a stronger relationship between that fisherman and the fish. Okay, I'm clearing out some space here. My gosh, my desk is a mess. But clutter. We can clean our work areas completely, right? Make it completely clear and immaculate, and then you do like one project and it's like all a clutter again. <laughs> Alright. 
All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down this water. It'll create a relationship between that side area, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these little ripples, kind of golden ripples down here. All right, so hopefully, hopefully we can kind of see the little shimmer. There we go from that gold ink, okay? And we'll make a kind of a stronger um, highlight as well. We use this white pen on the fish. Let's go in here and create some little sparkles in the water as well. Okay, something like that. I mean, there's a little bit more body to it now, like that. And then you, you know, it's down here as well, so. All right, so, okay, so there's my line. And there's my, here's my fold, okay. All right, now I need to see where this line starts, right? It's, where is it? <laughs> okay, there it is right there. So I'm going to have this fishing line kind of meandering about in here. I don't know if I want to have it coming from that. Well, maybe I will. Can have it kind of come in from here. I'll draw it this way and I'll have it kind of breaking the frame maybe. I wasn't quite sure. Okay, let me let me do a practice thing, okay? Okay, so it's here or here. Here? I'll have it come in maybe. I should do a loop the loop or something like that too. No, I don't want to do a loop over there. Okay, let me see. I'm trying to think of it It'd be more interesting if it was kind of more kind of everywhere, you know, but I'm not sure. I, I mean, there's not any right or wrong to this. Okay. Maybe I'll keep it tighter up here and I'll go down a little bit like that, or, or do I go like this and kind of come across here like this? Yeah, I think that might be kind of nice to do this and kind of come across the page, down and around. All right, let's just go for it. Okay, I need to end up right there though, that little tiny dot that I drew in there because that's where that one starts off and, okay. All right, was this one flowing here? Let me make sure I grab the right pen. This one's breaking up on me a little bit. Or, I don't know, or was that the one? Maybe that was the one. Yeah, maybe that was the one. You'll say, hey, yeah, yeah, I thought you said that thing flows perfectly well. Well, you know, it does when, it, when I'm doing these little dot types of things, little, you know, short lines, but this is a really 
extended continuous um, continuous line super I mean hell you know I mean I guess when people write oops I got some white on that oh well okay <sighs> coming down coming across and up okay right there. Okay, so it's coming off as kind of that rod. It's kind of coming down like that across these pages like that. Open card. There's that, there's that line right there. All right, let's fold. It's time for the fold, I think. And this is a pre-folded card, so it already has that crease in there. People are gonna think, what the heck? I'm gonna look at this, I'm like this. Ooh. Page one, page two, and then their eyes falling over, and hopefully, boom, you know what I mean? Hopefully it makes for a nice and bold kind of statement. All right, what do I want on here? Do I want anything else? I think I want um, some of those little, like on this, card from yesterday. I think I might want those little bubbles in here. How did I do the bubbles? <laughs> Alright, I'll just kind of have, have some of them coming up like this. It needs, I don't know, it, it's kind of an interesting statement just as is, but uh, I think we can use um, some additional kind of forms in here, so. I'm gonna do this before I put the fly in. I'm just trying to think of everything I wanna do on here before the fly, okay? Okay, so. Bubble making. Um, just various sizes. Larger ones look like maybe they're a little bit closer to us. Kind of interesting if you have um, some kind of circle stamp too or something like that and <clears throat> to do these maybe embossed or something like that where they're kind of raised or you can do them in clear stamp them in some sort of color I guess it could be white and then clear emboss them that'd be kind of nice You know, just that, you know, so that they're kind of raised and would take on more of a spherical kind of end result. Okay, 
Let's keep the bubbles away from that. Let's just leave that as kind of its own kind of statement. Or fly down like so. Clean off this hot glue. There, okay. All right, there we have it. Fisherman following the string. Just like that. You can put something else on there. I don't know what it would be like some uh I'm not quite sure. And he opens up like that. So there's your card. Here. Result. All right, I'll do something else with this. I'm not going to finish off my um, this one here, but I have one more variation on that kind of fish Father's Day fish card. So I don't know, more kind of a sequential type of thing with this one. I'm just kind of following along that line. It makes for kind of a fun little line like that. Father's Day. And there's a fish in line, so. He's not getting skunked today and Lucy loses it, you know, after it already uh, hooks up, so. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. As always, fun with fish.